You know what really just shivers me timbers? Grinds my gears? Are you aware of exactly what temperature grills my giblets? Broke men affecting my marriage prospects. I'll have you know, I just, I just, I just, I get so salty. How dare they? How absolute dare they? <laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome back to the show where I affirm your everyday fear in life as a chronic wielder of a designated ding-dong stick and pull back the curtain on the bleakness of the first world. This is Everything is Sexist, and we have to point it all out. Check the link in the top corner of this video for the playlist where you can find all of the episodes in this series. I'm sure you've seen that meme before in your traversals of the uh, respective corners of the internet that you all occupy, gents. World ends, women most affected, or something of that variant. There was a Tildare video in 2016 that reviewed the phenomenon we are about to dive into with respect to the gender differences in lung cancer that I would most definitely recommend taking a gander at after this. It's linked in the description if you so choose. I'm here to inform you though that that is not just a meme or the subject of a Tildare video, to be frank. My friendos, it is in fact part of our reality, the grim dark that impresses upon each and every one of our souls a distinct feeling of nihilism and perhaps a modicum, a modicum of depression. That meme, I'm sorry to say, has in fact integrated, deeply rooted and impressed itself upon the rock face of your day to day. You might be thinking, Whatever could you possibly be talking about, Weebo? Well, in order to answer your question, let's return to what I was talking about there in the intro of this video. Observe, broke men are hurting American women's marriage prospects. Yeah, the intro? That was serious. I wasn't joking about that. That's a thing. How fascinating though, how utterly intriguing to me. Incredulous, no? I bet you hadn't the foggiest that the blights of men were actually rather that of women. Let's read on. There's a devastating shortage of men who have their act together. I wonder why perhaps that could possibly be. Research now suggests that the reason for recent years' decline in the marriage rate could have something to do with the lack of economically attractive male spouses who can bring home the bacon. Well, that certainly does make sense. I mean, think about it. Men stand a chance of attracting themselves to some lecherous heathen that seven times out of ten, based off of a statistical analysis that I conducted in my head entirely just this moment, results in a lifetime of alimony and about 18 years of child support. And that second one doesn't even require putting a down payment in the form of a engagement ring in some cases. Let's be real. Of course, marriage rates are down. Most American women hope to marry, but current shortages of marriageable men, men with a stable job and a good income, make this increasingly difficult, says lead author Daniel Lichter. I can't imagine why that would be the case when women, quote, don't need no man to take care of them. They are strong, independent people who run the world with their sacred vagina powers. Unless you're a dream man as an Uber driver, the dearth of would-be grooms is prominent in the current gig economy of unstable, low-paying service jobs. You know, back in the day, I believe it was a Wednesday, perhaps maybe a Thursday, before the invention of the kiln, in fact, our Mesolithic ancestors had absolutely no trouble attaching themselves to a significant other for life, I'm pretty sure, and this was prior to the invention of um, direct deposit, and currency, actually, for that matter. And Uber, actually, come to think of it, because that was also before they had cars and mobile application software and electricity. Many young men today have little to bring to the marriage bargain, especially as young women's educational levels on average now exceed their male suitors. Pause. What I'm hearing, what you are telling me, what I gather from this article is that women, in fact, educationally outperform their male counterparts in a culture where Education is supposed to make all the difference career-wise, but not enough of them 
or at least enough of them to make a statistical significance, want to pony up and wear the loafers in the family? By being the breadwinner? Some ladies are even starting to date down in order to score a forever partner. My word, that is astonishing. Hey now. Hmm. There was a significant period of time there wherein women did not to contribute to the household but look pretty, much in the way an event EV on Pogo does in order to get traded for a substantial dowry allotted to them by their fathers to the husbands. And now that I think about it, it was not that long ago that all American housewives were a typicality either. It wasn't dating down then. Let's not start now, ladies and gents. There's the whole love factor in a marriage. In the end, it also is fundamentally an economic transaction. Now, I am not one to criticize the way people live their romantic lives, unless it's for jest, of course. Do what you will, it's your own life. Live it as you would. But what I will say is that it's rather interesting that the waning amount of financially viable men being framed as a problem for women, rather than say, I don't know, framed as a problem of the aforementioned financially struggling men. No, that's ridiculous. <laughs> However, that's not the tail end of this issue. Au contraire. This Metro article actually takes it a step further by making this a decidedly racial issue on top of being a women's issue. Not only are women at a disadvantage when it comes to finding well-off partners, but some groups also fare worse than others. Racial and ethnic minorities, especially black women, face serious shortages of potential marital partners. Woe is the plight of the American male which is actually the plight of the American black female. But that's not the end of it, and I wish it were, but it's not. It seems that, barring legislation, the patriarchy can still find a way to weasel its way into the crevices of a woman's no-no square, effectively controlling re women's reproduction in this most subversive of manners, financial floundering. Quote, Shortage of eligible men has left women taking desperate steps to preserve their fertility, experts say. But if you thought it ended with that, you'd be quite wrong. Men having a lack of friends is actually a burden borne by the women of the world. Oh, how the struggle of the women yet endures, my friends. Medical care, it also turns out, is on this list of things that are gendered issues, and this goes as far back as 2008. <gasps> Holy crap. Along with homelessness, climate change, and yes, even war. Hmm. And especially hilarious is that this position is one endorsed as far back as November 17th, 1998 by none other than the first lady at the time, Hillary Clinton. You might have heard of her. She's kind of a big deal, or she was, or she was supposed to be. Not really anymore. At a conference on domestic violence in El Salvador, Hillary Clinton can be quoted as having said this, women have always been the primary victims of war. Women lose their husbands, their fathers, their sons in combat, end quote. So what's the issue, Weibo? Why does this matter? Hmm, because, ladies and gentlemen, all silliness aside, trivializing a men's issue so much to the level that we've transfigured it somehow into a woman's issue instead leads to entirely dissuading ourselves of the notion that, in fact, this was a men's issue in the first place, and forgetting that it, in fact, still is a men's issue. I don't have the statistics on hand to support this, but I bet you that if we were to conduct an experiment, this might be a large part of the reason why, for instance, testicular and prostate cancer research is nowhere near funded at the same level that breast cancer is, despite men having 60% more chance of dying from cancer. And it's also probably the reason that the FBI's definition of, quote, rape doesn't include the oh-so-crucial made-to-penetrate factor that would affect the statistical representation of gendered sexual assault broad scope. And a whole host of other instances where such injustices exist, I'm sure. But you know what? I don't think we'll ever know. Because it's not a men's issue. It's actually a woman's issue. Don't you know?